main purpose of my role at um, the Defence Science and Technology Group is really to ensure that the Royal Australian Navy gets ships that um, have the main capabilities that they require. That not only is the outside of the ship, in other words, its length, beam, the weapon systems that you can see, but it also consists of everything that's inside it. Have we got the appropriate crew accommodation? Have we got enough fuel tanks for the range that we're um, asking them to go? Have we got the power and energy systems that not only drive the ship through the water, but also um, provide the hotel loads for the crew spaces? And more importantly, do they provide the, the, the energy to drive the combat systems, the weapons systems, and the communication systems? And in my role, I do this for both surface ships and, of course, the, um, the future submarine program. Once these ships have um, come into service, then it's how do we ensure that they're maintained effectively through the life and operate in the unique conditions that we have. So warships, unlike merchant ships, can't go and seek shelter when it's rough. They've got to experience the heavy sea states and survive. <coughs> Secondly, as you can see in the, the bottom picture there, where we've got a supply ship alongside a warship, um, they operate a long way from home the bringing together of two ships provides some unique operating conditions. So you can see some model experiments here of the big tanker on the far side and the Anzac ship here running side by side. It's experiencing some very, very heavy rolls and we need to ensure that this is safe um, for our ships. Similarly, with the Canberra class landing um, helicopter dock ships, small landing craft have, have to operate inside the well dock and you can see um, what we don't want there is for these landing craft to hit on the bottom of the ship and cause some damage. Warships as well as um, peaceful um, loads also experience some very demanding loads. A torpedo um, was fired underneath um, Torrens. Um, it broke the back of the ship and, and the ship sank. That's an extreme load that obviously we can't design against. But if we take an approach where, A, we don't want the ship to be seen first, then if it is seen, we don't want it to be hit, or we at ask the weapons, if you like, to explode a distance from the ship, then we end up with a damaged ship where we lose some sort of capability. And then over time, it's what do we repair? How quickly do we repair it? And so that we can bring the ship back to the level um, that it continued to do its, um, its, its mission. So what have I done in the past? I've done the science to address a lot of these activities and then in some spare time I've taken these scientific tools, models, um, approaches and applied, this, applied them to some very um, historic ships. So the AE2 in the Dardanelles, we applied a lot of this science and technology to explain exactly what happened to that ship. Secondly, HMAS Sydney was lost at the um, start of World War II. Again, all hands were lost. This science and technology was applied to the, um, to the Sydney to explain to the general public exactly what happened. And it's by using science, applying them to these interesting problems, that I think you attract young people into science and engineering in the future. And I guess that's really how I'd like to contribute initially. Thank you. Thank you.